Okay, so welcome everyone, and thanks a lot to Lucia Prieto Godino, who's joining us from the Creek in principle, but I believe from home in, the, in this case. And uh, Lucia, thanks a lot for being uh, here and you know explaining to students how to, I guess, craft the perfect PhD application. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself in a few sentences and tell us uh, what you do and yeah. where you are? Thanks a lot, Giorgio. So yeah, I'm um, I'm the group lead, uh, group leader um, at the Francis Crick Institute, and I direct the Neural Circuits and Evolution Lab. And uh, before that, I did my PhD at the University of Cambridge in the UK, and then I did my postdoc at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. And I okay, have right now three students. Sorry. <laughs> okay, brilliant. All right, let's 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 start with a general question, which I think it's a uh, um, common to all these interviews is, uh, what do you think are the skills that make a good PhD student? And how, how do you think an applicant could show you as a PI that they do have those skills? I think the main skill is the ability to ask scientific questions and the, um, the thrill, the, the imagination to, to have these questions, to, to be able to, to be excited about science. I think this is something very important. And I think the way that this comes along is either with the first email or um, in the case of the CRIC, for example, um, students have, applicants have to write a, a summary. And I will say that it's very important to bring this in the summary. What we want to hear, or at least what I want to read in the first email or in that summary is what excites you. Why are you excited about science? And that should reflect, of course, the things that we do in the lab. So if you are excited about neurodegeneration, I mean, this is great, but that's not what we do in the lab. So I'm not gonna pick you as a PhD student in the lab because there is not a good fit. So I think excitement about science and then that the topic is a good fit with the lab. Um, so I think that's the first thing that is most important in terms of other skills that I think are important for, for doing a PhD is also, and this is a bit harder to, to bring along with the, with the application, but things like being able to do experiments in the lab. So any, any experience that you can get, hands-on lab experience before starting your PhD is very useful because that demonstrates that, um, that you can only not think about problems, but also experimentally try to trace them. Um, and resilience. And this is perhaps one of the most important skills for, for doing a PhD and one of the hardest ones to prove. Right. Um, okay, so you say something about getting some feeling from the first email. So let's, uh, let me ask you, what do you think about students making informal contacts before even applying to your lab? I think that's a great idea. Yes, I think that's a very good idea. And I think it shows um, an extra interest for the lab rather than just uh, the Creek program in general. And, and what, what would you like this informal contact to talk about? Your research or their own experience? Um, yeah, I think just as I mentioned, um, what I want to hear what the students are excited about and why they thought that applying to my lab is a good idea. And, um, and sometimes might be related to things that we have published before, but of course in the lab we do a lot of things and not everything is published. I think if a student has an idea, in the case of my lab, about um, neuroscience and circuits and evolution of neural circuits, um, I want to hear it because um, of course, if it is a good student and it's a good match, we can always think about it and, and find a project that fits within the lab. So if you look back at your years as a PhD student, uh -huh. um, and, uh, and you could give an advice to yourself when you started, uh -huh. what, what, what has changed? I, I tell you what, what has changed for me, for instance, uh -huh. okay? For me, um, I, 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 when I started, I was all about the project. I was in love with the project. I thought the project was everything and nothing more important than the project. So I picked the lab that I really had a passionate project. When I finished, I realized that the project didn't matter, that the environment for me mattered the most, being surrounded by good colleagues, being in a good environment, a good research institute, um, you know. So that, that was my epiphany, if you want. Did you have anything like this? Did you, have, uh, did you change your point of view? Um, 
Well, I guess one learns. I was also, I think I was also very naive when I applied for my, for my PhD and I only thought about the project. And I, for example, when I went to interview in the lab, didn't occur to me to ask people in the lab, how was it to, how is the environment in the lab? It didn't occur to me at all. Um, everything went well, so I don't, I don't have any regrets, but, uh, but it is something that, for example, I, I did learn by talking to people, and it's something that I did when I did my postdoc interviews. I did ask people how was life in, in the labs where I interviewed. So, so certainly that's something that I think the students should keep in mind. They should uh, have a chance to talk with lab members and, uh, and discuss and, and make sure that it's not only the science that is exciting, but that it's also a good place to do science. So I think this is very important. Um, for my PhD times, I don't know, I guess so many things and so little. I mean, I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I would have, I would have liked to know, or if I could tell something to myself, was that everything was gonna be all right if, if you like what you're doing and if you work hard, because I think it can be, there's a lot of uncertainty and it can be very worrying. So I think if there is something that I would, if I could travel back in time and tell something to my old me, it would be that everything is gonna be fine. <laughs> okay, so another question regarding, you know, long-term career if you wish some some students when they start they already know that they want to be a pi some others might know that they want to work in industry i believe most students don't really know what they want to do next so um do you think there is a particular suggestion for you know either category let's say i mean i think so for me this is a hard one to address because um, I never, and again, I, perhaps because I was very naive, I never thought about my career. I never thought about PI or, or industry when I was applying. I was just really excited about science. And I just wanted to have the chance to do a PhD where I will have a number of years to just work on a project that I was really excited about. I think PhD students now, at least this is my feeling, they are less naive than what I was before. And they think more about the career, which I don't think is a bad thing, but it makes it hard for me to think of an advice just because that was not the way I thought. I think if they don't know, then they should just pick a PhD on a subject that excites, excites them and something that when they read, they think this is so cool. And when they do experiments, they really look forward to see what's, what's gonna come up. Um, if they want to go to industry, they might want to be a bit more strategic. That's the only thing. Uh, and think a little bit about the techniques or, or the topics that the industry might like. But for those who want to do academia or that they don't know, um, I would just say pick a project that that is exciting. Right. So you now, as a PI in the creek, you probably go to dozens or even more of a PhD application, I, I suppose, a hundred of PhD application every year. So what do you what do you learn from looking at so many applications? So is there any secret tip that you can share with us? Yeah, there were actually I was just now we are in the process of recruiting for PhD students. I have these things fresh. Um, and as I said, um, in this in this summary, in this first impression, so one one thing that I think is important for the students to take to be get in mind is that especially in these big PhD programs, um, each PI has to review hundred or more applications and realistically for in most cases they have like maybe three five minutes to convince uh, the group leader to pass them on to the next stage that will be like an interview right so things have to be to the point and, and concise and um, and clear so for example in that summary as I said um, what I want to see is why do you want to do a PhD in my lab? Not why you want to do a PhD in general, but in particular in my lab, why, what are the questions that are exciting for you? And a lot of the students, they use this space to say all of the great things they have done, but this I can already see on their CV. In this bit, I don't want to read from them how great they think they are. I want to read um, what is that excites them from a scientific point of view? What are the questions that they want to address? Um, so that's one thing. The other thing, 
they need to back their referees. So there are some students where the referees haven't answered and you have to start chasing them ourselves, then it just becomes like an extra step. So they shouldn't be shy and they should really make sure that the, that the reference is getting uh, on time. I think that's also something very important and pick them well. I think that, um, so a lot of students, I think it's good to pick the personal tutor because it says something, but if they can pick at least one or two reference from people that have seen them working actively in the lab in a research environment, um, I think that's also very important. Yeah, that's very good tips about the references. Right, so do, do you want to close by telling us how the progress works at uh, the Creek? How do you do actually, how do you go through the um, application mm -hmm. to becoming a PhD student? So all of the students need to apply directly to the program. They can choose to email us ahead and this is encouraged and it's great, but um, we won't be able to tell them anything either than we encourage you to apply because everything has to go through the official application process. Um, once that's in, then uh, and well, and when in doing that, the students can pick up to six labs um, and they can rate the labs as one or two we will go through all of the applications. So even if you rated my lab as a two, uh, if I think that it is a good application, um, I will not ignore it or I, I will consider it very seriously, um, even though they rated my lab as a two. So that's one thing that is important. And this means that most applications are reviewed by a lot of uh, group leaders. Uh, and this means that most group leaders will, re will review a lot of applications in the order of 100. Um, out of those, we can invite, each PI can invite three students. So you can imagine that this is quite, quite a bottleneck when, when out of 100, you can invite only three. And then uh, we can make a list of 10. So seven in addition of those three. Um, and if another group leader has put in their number in their one of the first three, one of the ones that I have in my extra seven, then I will be able to interview them as well. So eventually I will be able to interview six students out of all of the ones that applied. Um, so yes, yeah, so all of us go through the applications, all of us make a rating. I can see how other PIs are rating the, the other students and there is no, I mean, I think we all just want to have the best match in between students and, uh, and groups. So, so whenever people are invited to the interview, we encourage the students to, to also have one-to-one -one interviews with other PIs that have selected them. And in general, it works quite well to, to make a match. So very competitive, but very transparent. Again. It is, sorry, very competitive. But quite, quite transparent. transparent. So yeah, exactly. All... It is, it is yeah. quite transparent in the end. And then if a student um, is wanted by two labs, <laughs> then, uh, then the uh, student yeah. will be able to pick if the two labs want the student, right? So it's um, somehow it, it ends up working quite well. But here, the only thing is that, again, I come back to this summary, right? Because the students can apply for six labs. I think there is sometimes they feel the urge that they need to fill in all six labs. And I think this is a mistake. I think they should, if they fill in just three or just two, that's fine. They should put in the ones that they are most interested on. Um, also, I would recommend that they mention in that summary that they have why they want to join at least the labs that they have rated as a one, um, rather than keeping it very, very general. I think is. It may be the feeling that keeping it general is good because it might capture more uh, more attention. But I think at least I haven't talked with other PIs about this actually. But for me, I think it's detrimental because I like to see some ideas um, about the science. Well, I guess this was invaluable for someone who's trying to apply to the Greek. Lots of insight. Uh, <laughs> uh, abuse. Okay, Lucia, I think this is it. I thank you a lot for your time. And uh, thank you very much. Bye. Thanks a lot. <laughs>